James Buchanan Duke went from working at his father's tobacco farm in rural North Carolina, just north of Durham, to becoming one of the richest men in America with business interest in textiles, energy, and tobacco. And when he traveled, he traveled in style. Let's take a look inside the private rail car of James Duke. Private rail cars became popular amongst the elite in the late 1800s. Think of them as today's corporate jet. It was in 1917 that James Duke, also known as Buck, ordered this car, built by the Pullman Car Company. He named it after his only daughter, Doris, and there was no holding back on the extravagance. In 1917, this car cost $38,000. It's today's equivalent of about three quarters of a million dollars, but the amenities also added up. Some $600 was spent on linens alone, today's equivalent of about $12,000. 400 was spent on dishes, glassware, and china. Another $400 spent on 12 dozen embroidered napkins, today's equivalent of $8,000 for napkins. Duke and his brother Ben took over their father's tobacco company in the 1880s, and with licensing for the first automatic cigarette roller, dominated the industry. They gained 40% of the market with the Duke Tobacco Company, then purchased their competitors and formed the American Tobacco Company, eventually controlling 90% of the U.S. tobacco market. The money rolled in. Antitrust rulings eventually broke up the company. In the meantime, the family had purchased textile mills. Duke created the Southern Power Company to provide their Durham mill with electricity, soon began supplying other mills, and Southern Power became a regional force providing plentiful hydroelectric power across North Carolina. Southern Power was eventually renamed Duke Power, and later Duke Energy. Duke was headquartered in New York City, but he had a farm in New Jersey, a home in Charlotte, and business interests up and down the East Coast, so the car was used for frequent trips, typically about five to seven days at a time. Washington, D.C., Rhode Island, St. Petersburg, Florida were all common destinations. And when Duke traveled, he and his companions lacked for nothing. A chef and a waiter traveled aboard the Doris. They slept in an adjoining bedroom to this kitchen, and the food was excellent. Some of Duke's favorites, squid, turkey, hams, gouda cheeses, for dessert, typically java and bourbon coffee. Duke also smoked a lot, up to two dozen cigars a day, according to some reports. In one 18-month period, 5,000 cigars were purchased for the Doris. The rail car features sleeping quarters, facilities, and an observation deck on the rear. Private cars were typically the last car on the train, allowing an unobstructed view of what you were leaving behind. Duke made 97 trips aboard the Doris in the seven years that he owned the car. In the last year of his life, part of those trips were to set up the Duke Endowment. This was money earmarked for four colleges, Duke University, Davidson, Furman, and Johnson C. Smith not-for-profit hospitals and children's homes in North and South Carolina, and rural Methodist churches. It's even said that Duke and Duke University officials were in this car along a railroad siding in Durham when the West Campus of Duke University, including Duke Chapel, were laid out. In October of 1925, Duke took ill in Newport, Rhode Island, and traveled back to New York on the car. He died several days later. The Doris was purchased by Western Pacific Railroad. It was used as a private car for the railroad's executives and was rebuilt to add air conditioning in 1937. The railroad sold the car to a property developer in 1975, where it served as his office near a shopping center. In 1979, he donated it to the North Carolina Transportation History Corporation, now the North Carolina Transportation Museum Foundation. Duke Power Company paid the $7,000 to move the Doris to a track that would cross the country. From there, the Santa Fe Railway moved it to Kansas City. Norfolk Southern finished the journey for the Doris, bringing her here to Spencer. And here she remains more than 40 years later. Special tours are given during special events here at the museum. A look inside the world of the rich and powerful. Continue to learn at home with other great videos from the North Carolina Transportation Museum on Facebook, YouTube, and nctrans.org. The North Carolina Transportation Museum in Spencer is the museum that moves you.